If there was some kind of global usage stats for blades in this game, I feel like Florin would be one of those blades near the bottom. Not because he's unlikable or anything like that, but because his blade kit is just one of the most boring in the entire game. He really has nothing exciting going on for him. Even among the other lower tier blades, they usually have some kind of gimmick or interesting mechanic that sets them apart and can make them fun or unique. Florin's gimmick is... he can heal. Lightly more than other healers. And we all know how good healing is in this series. Regardless though, you can make Florin work just fine, and he still offers a few things that can make him worth using, and in this video we're going to discuss Florin, talk about all of his strengths and weaknesses, and see how to use him most effectively. As per usual, if you enjoy my guides and general Xeno content, make sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. So Florin is a Bitball Blade, the final we will discuss. This means he is a healer class blade with the lowest auto attack stat in the entire game, just barely going over 1100 with the proper core chip. He also can reach a critical hit rate of 30% with a Moon Matter core chip, and has a pretty mediocre block rate which should never matter at all for Florin. He has 5% physical defense and 35% ether defense, which again, will not matter unless you're getting hit by AoE attacks. Florin is not getting aggro. He also comes with a 10% ether mob, which is pretty low, but at least something useful to get slightly better heals, and his cooldown is 4, which is pretty average. Let's take a look at his skill tree. Florin's first skill is White Lilies. This increases his aggro reduction by 10% at level 1, rising up to 30% at level 5. This skill is probably useless. For one, Florin is probably never going to get aggro anyway unless you have a severe lack of damage on your team because Florin sure as heck does no damage and he certainly isn't going to be building much aggro. And secondly, since this skill is about increasing your aggro reduction, it's just going to make you lose aggro you've already gained faster, which doesn't really help all that much for Florin if he never gains enough aggro to have aggro or lose much aggro to begin with. I guess you could just call this overkill, but honestly it's just not a great skill overall. Florin's second skill is Blossom Fall. This will restore 60% of the max HP of your party members when Florin dies at level 1, rising up to 100% at level 5. So if Florin dies, his two party members get a full heal. This skill sucks. For one, Florin is not likely to take aggro to ever die before anyone else in the party. Two, there's already plenty of easy ways to keep the party fully healed, so literally dying to heal the party is one of the worst methods of healing possible. And three, dying being a strategy is pretty terrible in nearly every situation. You should not want to die in a fight, that just makes it harder. There's nothing good about this skill, and there could have been so many better options than it. There are so many more reliable forms of healing, and suicide healing like this is just not a very effective strategy. Especially on a blade like Florin, who will have a hard time ever dying before his teammates, since once again, not likely to get aggro. Florin's final skill is Coming of Spring. This will increase the effectiveness of party healing by 15% at level 1, rising up to 25% at level 5. Every source of healing will now heal you slightly more. Good thing Florence flat healing art and any other bit ball could already full heal anyway. This is just another overkill skill. There's not many situations an extra 25% healing is going to matter since you're likely to just be fully healed regardless, and I guess it can be marginally helpful sometimes if you're earlier in the game or using Florin on a character without a flat healing art to get some extra heals from potions, but I just don't see it being that useful in many situations. There's so many other blades that can heal and offer so much more, not to mention another spoiler blade that's even better at being a pure healer that completely outclasses Florin and at least has a unique weapon type. Florin's skills are just not very good or interesting at all. He gets less aggro and heals slightly more than the average healer, but that barely sets him apart. There's a good chance common bit balls could be more useful depending on what skills they get, and even if Florin has an okay weapon and element, it's just hard to call him an exciting or fun blade to use because his skills really are just that boring and passive. But maybe there's a silver lining. Let's talk about his specials. Florence level 1 special is Lavender Drive. This is a physical based special for some reason of about average speed. It has an average damage ratio of 300 at level 1, 460 at level 5, and 480 at max affinity. It has no special modifiers and it's only single target. In addition, its bonus effect is doing increased damage to launched enemies, which is very weird for Florid in general given how he has basically no damage to offer, and Bitballs don't really have a way to launch, so even taking advantage of this effect is more difficult. Even if you do get the bonus effect, the damage likely isn't going to be very meaningful, and all around the special is not very good. Florin's level 2 special is Lilium Dance. This special is better than his level 1 pretty easily, being ether based, having a decent area of effect radius, and having an alright damage ratio of 400 at level 1, 560 at level 5, and 609 at max affinity. 
Additionally, the bonus effect this time around is healing 50% of the damage dealt to the whole party, which even by Florin standards, this is a free full heal most of the time. Especially so with the boost to healing that probably doesn't matter at all. This is just another way Florin can heal and keep the party healthy, so I guess that's a good thing. Florin's level 3 special is Fissilis Judgment. This is another ether based special of average speed. It actually has a 25% critical hit modifier and a pretty strong damage ratio of 550 at level 1, 750 at level 5, and 782 at max affinity, which is higher than you might expect. It also has a decent area of effect radius to hit multiple enemies, and the bonus effect is spawning health potions. Yeah, health potion spawning isn't the most useful, but it is still something, I guess, and any source of healing can always be helpful at times. Just don't expect Florin to really be doing any damage with his specials. Florin's level 4 special is Lethal Lavender. The special is a typical level 4 with a damage ratio of 1000 and a bonus effect that restores 50% of the damage dealt to the entire party, making it a good emergency healing option since it will make the par entire party invincible while it's being used. It has a 20% critical hit modifier, and it doesn't really do anything besides that, but it can be there for emergency healing if you do need it. You can also use it to set up fusion combos, which might be one of the best things to do with Lauren since he doesn't really do much else. All around, Florin specials are pretty mediocre as you might expect, but you can heal with them, making them okay options for his class. Just wish he offered anything else. For setup, I am running the Tachyon chip for the marginally higher auto attack for extra healing, and because I don't think crit rate is valuable enough on Florin to warrant a Moon Matter chip. For Ox Cores, Florin is already not going to be doing much damage, so I stick with more supportive team options like Affinity Max Barrier and Night Vision so he can hit his attacks, and at least do something with that. Barrier is good for giving an overheal to the entire team, which is always going to be useful. For accessories, I have a very supportive build that is more about helping my allies do as much damage as possible, and for that we're running Burst Symbol to increase the entire party's chain attack power, Crystal Earrings to get a huge amount of party meter when we get an excellent special, and Survivor's Footgear so Florin can never die. It's very passive and our team will carry us, because Florin certainly isn't going to be doing much besides heal and get party meter for constant chain attacks. For pouch items, our recharge is good. It's always good, and it's good here. Extra party meter gain can also be a very good effect to have, so stuff like Victory Smoothie and Hot Reuse Steam Bum that offer both of these effects are very good items. With all that done, let's take a look at how to use Florin practically. So since Florin isn't the most exciting blade option and I wanted to have a little bit of variety on the Bitballs on this channel, I'm deciding to use him on Nia this time. We haven't actually seen Bitballs on Nia yet, but Bitballs on Nia are actually a decent option for a weapon on her as well. They're just typically better on Zeke in the post game because of the big damage ratio of Pulverizing Dunk and the easy full heal you can get out of Shell Shot. But Nia has a pretty good flat healing art with Bitballs. Along with another really low cooldown art with Falcon Turn, which has pretty similar cooldown to a Pulverizing Dunk, even though the damage ratio isn't as strong. Dolphin Spins a decent HP potion art, and yeah, you can have pretty decent healing with Bitballs on Nia. I'm sure that's probably well known to everyone. With this current setup I have with the Crystal Earrings and everything, we can really, really easy just build up party meter and just start spamming chain attacks and have our very, very strong allies carry us, like um, Elma and Poppy Cutie Pie, who have some of the best chain attack damage out there. Um, and I don't think Cutie Pie is perfectly, perfectly optimized right now on damage. I could probably easily be doing more with her, but that's not really a big deal. Easy enough fight, easy enough fight. Not even that difficult at all. And Tyrant and Titan Turtle goes down to basically two chain attacks because of the sheer damage output that we have with our two party members. But as expected, he's not exactly a huge threat anyway, so what about a more challenging foe? One with 50 million HP and significantly higher defenses? Well, the same basic strategy works. Even if Nia gets hit by any of Ken's AoE, it doesn't really matter because she has the Survivor's Foot Gear, which just gives a huge amount of defense. You can see, just from the extra star ability we have, like, I only took 100, 1,500 damage from that, um, attack there, which is actually really impressive for, um, Florin, who has only 5% physical defense, so... Yeah, Survivor's Foot Gear is really good for just increasing your base survivability quite a bit. We've already got, um, uh, Chain Attack Party Meter built up here, I was just gonna use the Gaia, Gaia Crash, try to get some fusion combo damage out of this, um, out of this, uh, break here. So you can see Florence chain attack damage is about to split here and our setup is just doing nothing. It's just doing nothing. We're not even hitting 100,000 on his hits and Meanwhile's almost damage capping and Cutie Pie's nearly damage capping. Yeah, it's it's a very significant difference to say the least. But at the same time, Florin can do his job of surviving. Um, we can set up this barrier on our party members. We can use our level 1 special really quickly to get almost full party meter just right there and then use this level 3 with... Cutie Pie here to finish out the rest of our party meter really fast and just chain attack once again. 
And it ends up being a pretty viable strategy overall, despite um, some of the complications surrounding uh, Florin. No. One thing I should be doing here in these chain attacks that I didn't even think about until later is not using Florin on the level 1 special there, because that means I'm not going to have um, a way to get Cutie Pie's level 2 special in these chain attacks and do even more damage. And I didn't even think about it until later. Just because I don't have any extra blades on floor right now, and I can't fully recharge Cutie Pie without an orb to burst on his turn. So, just a bit unfortunate in how I uh, set everything up here. Elma's 100 shells does a lot of decent amount of damage there, though, so not really a huge deal. And overall, even with the uh, lethal harpoon and everything, we're not really that worried. I am actually, um, since I'm in the process of using a special here, Zeke actually gets to 1 HP because I wasn't um, being very careful, but he got saved. We got the full heal with our uh, other ability. We can chain attack through any dangerous attack like Tentacle Storm just because we got party meter so quickly we don't even have to worry about anything, which is always very nice. And yeah, we can just always be putting out very consistent damage and just keep using these chain attacks to do as much damage as possible. And even though Florin's not really contributing anything in the damage department, his healing and just ability to get party meter insanely fast is still very, very useful here. And um, that's what we're going to be doing here. You can just see how fast the chain attack meter just rises with this. Now, unfortunately, the cloud breath does get rid of my um, remaining party meter there because it just cut everything. That's not a huge deal, though. I can just use a quick level one again with Florin to uh, get most of that back. And uh, I was waiting for Cutie Pie to get close to Taurus so we could uh, use that level 3 and I could um, set up another fusion combo here. And there's another break. Lightning plate on the break. And we should be good for another chain attack here to hopefully finish off most of the rest of his health bar. Not really a big deal at all. Constant chain attacking like this actually is a pretty good strategy in general because when you set up these, these blade combos and these orbs on enemies, they can have a chance to awaken, and instantly breaking that orb will remove the awakening status. It's the only way to do it without using Schultz level 1, so that is uh, one benefit of um, just instantly breaking these orbs. You can just make sure the enemy is not as powerful as he could be otherwise, and um, that's always very helpful. So overall, I thought I would have enough damage to kill him in this chain attack. I don't think I got quite enough, but you can just see the effectiveness of a strategy like this. Even using Florin, just being very passive, just using specials for party meter, just keeping the team healthy, we're pretty much all right. If I would have been smart about my chain attack special uses there, I would have easily killed him in that chain attack. Unfortunately, it doesn't work out that way because I'm not smart enough to make sure I could uh, get QD Pie's level 2 special off, because I just wanted to show off Lauren specials in the chain attack. <laughs> not a huge deal, we just get Max one more time and do this completely overkill chain attack that I didn't even need to do at all. And Florin still doesn't even get enough damage to kill him with that sliver of HP. That's actually kind of sad, but it's okay. Not a big deal. Cloud Sea King can goes down, no trouble at all. And yeah, that's kind of just a decent strategy you can use with Florin to just have your your strong party members carry you while Florin still somewhat contributes. Now you might be asking, well, what about the other bit ball strategy with the art spamming pulverizing dunk on Zeke? And you can do that. If you want to, like, try to go all in on damage, it can be an okay strategy. And you can do a decent amount of damage with it. But the problem is more so just it doesn't feel like it's the most useful thing to do with Florum when other bit balls can do the same thing and just be a lot better at doing it. Like, Vess has higher crit rate. Um, Crosset has a ton of extra damage. Dahlia is really useful in um, chain attacks herself and has some decent damage also. And even Boreas has a really good early game skill tree, so it's hard to see the usefulness of wanting to do this kind of strategy with Florin over another blade. That's just kind of one of the weaknesses of Florin in general, I just feel like he's not really very unique as a blade. Like I already said, his main strengths are he heals slightly more and gets slightly less aggro than the average healer, and that's just not very useful to set him apart or make him an interesting blade in a gameplay perspective. It's not that he's bad, I just feel like he has very clear uh, weaknesses in that sense, and just because of the type of combat systems you know Blade 2 is, where healing's not very strong, that just makes Florin not very good as a Blade overall compared to his contemporaries, but if you want to use Florin, you can have plenty of success. I think that's going to cover it for this guide video, so I do hope you guys have learned something from watching this, and if you did, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like, comment down below, and look forward to the remaining Blade guides. I've got a a few more planned, I think we're down to the last 10, and I'm going to try to be working hard to get those out very, very soon. Just um, 
just finish the series strong. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. So thank you all so much for watching. And as usual, have a wonderful and blessed day.